mean, this is kind of funny, but I was to say it's just like, it's not stuffy. Hello, welcome back to A Vintage Splendor. I'm Annette, and today I'm gonna take you behind the scenes with me as I source vintage for one of my favorite legacy brands, St. John. Many of the legacy brands, design houses like Chanel, Hermes, St. John want to have their vintage pieces in their archive. So they want to retain this fashion history so that they can reference it for future collections. They like referring to the materials, the silhouettes, and overall aesthetic of a particular collection. So St. John wants to have a lot of these pieces from the 60s to the 90s, pieces that are iconic, that really speak to their brand legacy and what made them a household name for a lot of American women. And this collection is representative of their fashion history. So a lot of people may be asking why St. John doesn't have a lot of these pieces. Well, just think about when you sometimes clear out your closet. You're like, I don't think I need this particular piece. Sometimes as companies change hands, um, the ownership of the company has changed and somebody made a decision not to retain all of these pieces. So again, it goes back to preserving that fashion history for their own records, but also for fans and lovers of the brand. Well, even though I don't look a day past 29, I'm 42 and I started thrifting when I was around 10 or 11 years old. I've been thrifting for a really, really long time. One of the brands that I've loved thrifting is St. John. I think I originally looked at the brand because it was a cheaper alternative to the classic Chanel like cropped little jacket and I realized I love St. John more than Chanel for these iconic pieces and started collecting a lot of the vintage St. John like sets like I'm wearing today, cardigans, jackets, and I love to style them up in a really fresh way. You know, you always see me styling them up with like my ripped up vintage Levi's. What caught St. John's attention is that I was always sourcing their pieces at estate sales, flea markets, private collections, thrift stores, eBay, and really approaching these historical pieces in a fresh and contemporary way. And they reached out to me. So my assignment from the brand was to source as many pieces, around 100 pieces that are super iconic. So it wasn't just finding pieces, just any piece. It had to be a piece that had a point of view, something that I thought could be styled in a really contemporary way. So my task was to source 100 vintage St. John pieces for their archives. And I looked at pieces from the 60s through the 90s that were really, really representative of that like moment in time when the brand was designing particular collections. And of course I was sourcing pieces for their archives, pieces that they can keep back of the house, so to speak, reference it, think of ways how to modernize it for the woman today. And then also pieces that they can resell because there is such a big demand for vintage St. John nowadays, but they're also trying to introduce vintage to a whole new audience which has been the St. John customer who always buys retail but may be interested in vintage and they don't know how to approach it and that was my task at hand is sourcing 100 pieces that are super special that the brand can reference but that also people who have never shopped vintage would be really eager to buy. Well I know the brand really well. As I mentioned, I've been shopping for it for so long. I know the history behind the brand, but I did do a deep dive and looked into a lot of their historic 
advertising that you would have found in Vogue or Elle. And just to get it like a feel for what St. John, what was the vibe that St. John was exuding in the 80s versus the 90s? Maybe there was like a cool feature in like one of the first ladies wearing St. John and kind of overall what that vibe was. And I just kind of did a mashup of the two, just everything that I know about the brand, but also like referencing a moment in time. And I was like, okay, now I have my marching orders. Like I know exactly what I want to source. So everywhere and anywhere. So yes, this is a really, really fun job. Like sourcing vintage dream job for me i never thought that this would be a job that i could do when i started thrifting as a middle schooler and now i get to do it but i look everywhere so a lot of these pieces have come from private collections and how i access private collections is through word of mouth like networking with everyone whether it's like costume designers it's women who volunteer at a charity shop to designers to vintage sellers and just like my own network of people but a lot of it is also going to estate sales thrift stores vintage markets shopping online i joke about this like sometimes people will list something and online it'll be like my grandma's old stuff and it'll be a lot of maybe 50 pieces I have been doing this for so long. I've refined my eyes so well that I can like from just really, really terrible grainy photos, I can spot specific designers. And I reached out to those sellers. A couple of them were on eBay. I said, can you give me a like close up look of some of these pieces? I'm interested in them. They sent them to me. I asked for a bundle discount and it worked. So it's really fun, but it really takes a lot of expertise and just like understanding the brand like as i mentioned i really know the brand i know their like materials i know their silhouettes i know just the overall aesthetic so i could be in a thrift store and i can like literally walk in and spot that saint john pretty easily so a lot of these pieces came from like the whole gamut i was digging through uh piles <laughs> at Goodwill where I found literally like 1960s pieces, which is what the brand launched with, like was their like original Santana knit to other iconic pieces. So not only was I tasked with finding vintage pieces, but I was also asked to do it through lens of like creative styling and a little bit of like a creative director. So every brand will have iconic pieces that are always just gonna be jaw dropping, beautiful, stand the test of time. And then there are pieces that just like don't fit the bill. So for me, I thought, okay, will the contemporary woman want to style this in a really fresh way? Are there specific like silhouettes? Is this like silhouette, is it like a crop jacket or is it perfectly like oversized so that again it feels really contemporary saint john does a really great job of like trim so a lot of their pieces like i have on have really great collars they have beautiful buttons like does it have those pieces and then if it was like dresses is this like a really beautiful take on the lbd so there are pieces that i sourced that had like these voluminous like sleeves with like beading and sequins and then are there pieces that you know a woman could wear for the everyday and it can feel really really fresh of course in the middle of it i was able to find a piece it is a fully embellished with gold paillettes and Fran Drescher wore it on an episode of the nanny i almost fainted when i found it at the thrift store so it was like that was the process. It wasn't just about like finding just any 100 pieces. It was really about finding those like, jaw dropping pieces that speak to the quality and craftsmanship of the brand that are like truly representative of the beautiful materials, trim and silhouettes that the brand is known for. After I source the pieces, I document everything 
I am very creative, but I also like to be very organized, especially with a task like this. So I actually have an inventory list that I create that tracks how much I've paid for an item. I actually like will individually package up pieces. I photograph it. I reference it. If there are any style notes, like for example, this is a tunic and skirt set, but I think the tunic could be styled as a mini dress. I note that on this inventory list. And then um, once I photograph it, I package it up. So when the brand receives this huge box of a hundred items, they can quickly reference my inventory list. Like it, this is item number one. It is a cropped black and white jacket. It is from the 1960s. It was St. John for Neiman Marcus or Saks Fifth Avenue. This is how much Annette paid for it. And this is how she thinks it should be styled. So a lot of work goes into it. And this is where my expertise in just sourcing for vintage, understanding styling, but also the retail space, since that is my background too, it all just comes together into like the dream project. So I know the easiest answer is like every piece. Like I think every single piece that I found and sourced, I was absolutely obsessed with. And again, it's like, really honing in on my vision for what I was doing for the brand. But I would say top four pieces. So number one is the vest that was on the nanny. And I actually found a second one that I bought for myself. That's how much I loved it. The other one is this beautiful purple dress from the 90s. If you look at this dress, it is what every contemporary brand is trying to do right now. It's a halter, it has cutouts, it's a maxi dress. It is so elegant, kind of sad that I didn't keep that dress for myself. There's a red belt, it's leather, and it has this really cool medallion on the front. It's from the 80s. Again, it looks like something that you would see on the runway today. And then there was this really great set. It's like a black LBD, really simple dress. And then it has this beautiful jacket. It has like the white collar. It has like a little floral piece. So I don't know. I feel like it's one of those pieces that can be really versatile and all you need in your closet. Like, are you going to a black tie like or a cocktail party? You can just wear the dress on its own. Are you going to a funeral and you need to be a little bit more buttoned up? You can wear the jacket over it. I mean, if you're going to like a fun like party with your girlfriends, happy hour, just add like a gold gaudy belt, some heels, and it can be like very, very fun and flirty. Or if you're going to Trader Joe's, you can just wear that cardigan and some jeans and you're good to go. So say those are my four favorite pieces. And I think all of them have sold out on the website. I am going to link to the site so you can shop some of the pieces because the collection is live. But yeah, those are my favorites. Um, ooh, this is a good question. So, I mean, this is kind of funny, but I was to say it's just like, it's not stuffy. Like people associate St. John with like very stuffy, like reserved, conservative, almost like country club vibes but like not in a fun way and my approach to this collection was anybody can access any of these pieces and style them up in a way that is like really fun super stylish and like basically completely destroys like this notion of saint john being a stuffy brand Okay, so St. John, I will tell you, is very easy to spot because of their Santana knit. So some of their jackets and even dresses, you'll notice they'll have like buttons or detailing on the shoulders. So when you are thrifting and you're just like scanning the rack, you can usually spot one of their pieces because of the knit, because of like some of the detailing on the shoulders. So that is very easy. The other thing to note is because it is a wool blend, Sometimes pieces at the stores will have holes. So you wanna just check to make sure it's still in great condition and it doesn't have any holes because that's just like, even though you can try and fix it, it just really does not look perfect even when it is repaired. And the other note is you can wash it at home. I have a video all about washing your vintage St. John. It, technically it should be dry cleaned, but I think if you're an avid thrifter, 
you cannot like dry clean everything because then you'll just go broke. So refer to that video if you do find pieces. One of the incredible things about St. John is for a luxury brand, it is easily accessible at a thrift store or flea market. St. John pricing has always been on par with some of these like very luxe brands from Europe like Chanel, Dior, Givenchy, but the fact that you can find it pretty much at any thrift store is mind boggling to me. And women who collected St. John like literally collected a closet full of it. So I would say, depending on what the thrift store pricing is in your city and where you're located, you could pay as little as, you know, $10 for a jacket to, you know, $300 or $400 if you're shopping online. And if it is somebody who's gone through the curation process of like finding it, cleaning it and making sure that it is authentic St. John and it's like from one of the early collections from the 60s or the 70s. Thank you so much for joining me today. I thought it would be super fun to take you behind the scenes of sourcing um, for St. John. This has been something that I wanted to do. I just didn't know how to make it happen. And funny enough, the brand reached out and made it happen. So this is something I've also been doing for a couple of other brands behind the scenes. St. John was gracious enough to allow me to talk about it because a lot of times brands do not want people to know that they hire somebody to do this work for them. But if you have any questions about sourcing, just let me know. I'm happy to answer them. Leave them in the comments and be sure to like, subscribe, and I have a new video up every Friday. So I'll see you next week. Bye.